the upcoming winter fight favors the Ukrainians. That's according to U.S. Secretary of Defense Austin, who gave comments yesterday at the Pentagon alongside the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Milley. I'll put a link in the description below to the full readout of that event. Run through a couple of the highlights here. Secretary Austin, in his opening remarks, talked first about the missile strike in Poland, saying, we're still gathering information, but we've seen nothing that contradicts President Duda's preliminary assessment that this explosion was most likely the result of a Ukrainian air defense missile that unfortunately landed in Poland. And whatever the final conclusions may be, the world knows that Russia bears ultimate responsibility for this incident. That's pretty standard with what I've seen so far. And what they're getting at with Russia bearing full responsibilities, even if it was a Ukrainian munition, even if it veered off track and whatever happened, uh, Ukraine would not have been doing that if Russia wasn't firing missiles into Ukraine. So that's where that thread leads back to uh, faulting Russia for that. He continued saying, I'm pleased to report that the NASIM's air defense systems that we sent to Ukraine are now operational and their performance so far has been very impressive. The NASIM system had a 100% success rate in intercepting Russian missiles as the Kremlin continues, continues its ruthless bombardment of Ukraine, including yesterday's attacks. And this event was on November 16th, this press conference on November 16th. So yesterday's attacks, he'd be referring to those that occurred on November 15th, 2022. Moving to General Milley's opening comments, he talks more about the um, goals and plans within the Russian military and what they have failed or succeeded in doing so far. Milley said, in short, they wanted to overrun all of Ukraine and they lost. They didn't achieve those objectives. They failed to achieve their strategic objectives and they're now, now failing to achieve their operational and tactical objectives. Russia changed their war aims in March and beginning of April. Their war of choice then focused on the seizure of the Donbass, the Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts. That was their operational objectives and they failed there. Then they changed again and expanded to seize Zaporozhye and Kherson. So across the entire frontline trace of some 900 or so kilometers, the Ukrainians have achieved success after success after success, and the Russians have failed every single time. They've lost strategically, they've lost operationally, and I repeat, they've lost tactically. Now this next part I thought was rather interesting. It was a question for General Milley, and these are the, when we look at a lot of these press conferences, the opening remarks are fine, um, but they're usually pretty well prepared and vetted. I like seeing how, whether it's military or civilian leadership from any country, responds when these questions come up. Sometimes you can, you can kind of see them skirting around the side, not wanting to answer things. But just how they word some of these responses, I think, is, is always important. So a question was asked of General Milley after the strike occurred, talking about in Poland. Did you reach out to your Russian counterparts, or did any other military officers reach out to their Russian counterparts to protect against escalation? It's been a big part of this whole conflict, war in Ukraine, uh, the concern that it can spiral out of control. Throughout much of the Cold War, there was a direct line of communication at all times between the United States and the Soviet Union, kind of as a last resort to make sure an accident didn't lead to a world war. And that has, there's been kind of mixed reports, but for the most part, it seems like that has been missing so far in this conflict. So anyways, General Milley was asked about that, and he said the short answer is yes. Some attempts were made. No success with the Russian counterpart. I did talk to my Ukrainian counterpart immediately. Talked to him several times, in fact. Also, Russian, Polish counterpart and several other chiefs of defense in Europe. My staff was unsuccessful in getting me linked up with General Gerasimov, his Russian counterpart. So when it comes to the strikes in Poland, it sounds like General Milley was not actively communicating with his counterparts in Russia, which is a problem. Um, we want those lines of communication to be open at the top level. It avoids a little mistake turning into a big, big war. Continuing on, another question for General Milley. They asked him about his comments earlier in the week about the possibilities of discussions, uh, the discussion of peace being brought up due to a slow in the fighting during the winter. General Milley was much more aggressive during this press conference, didn't really talk much about peace negotiations and a time for talks. So they asked, do you see this as a, an opportunity for negotiations with the Russians? General Milley said, no. I think the Ukrainians should keep the pressure on the Russians, you know, to the extent that they militarily can. But winter gets very, very cold, and the natural tendency is for tactical operations are going to naturally, probably, slow down. 
And what he ends up getting into is it's likely, he and Secretary Austin both take this stance, which I think is fair, that historically operations tend to slow a bit in the winter. Um, it's just really cold outside, especially in this part of the world. So if operations slowed down, if there's not as much rapid back and forth changing of lines on the battlefield, that potentially presents the opportunity for talks to begin or continue. It's kind of where he left it this time around. General Milley continued saying the probability of Russia achieving its strategic objectives of conquering Ukraine, the probability of that happening is close to zero. Think about how much that's changed since the opening of the war that started the invasion. He continued, I can suppose theoretically it's possible, but I don't see it happening militarily. I just don't see it happening. But they do currently occupy about 20% of Ukraine. So they occupy this piece of ground that's about 900 kilometers long and around 75 to 80 kilometers deep. So it's not a small piece of ground. And they invaded this country with upwards of 170 to 180,000 troops in multiple field armies, combined armed armies, and they've suffered a tremendous amount of casualties. But he, Putin, has also done this mobilization and called up additional people. So the Russians have reinforced and they still have significant Russian combat power inside of Ukraine. It's been a while since the war kicked off, but right out the gate, I, I don't want to put words in General Milley's mouth, but a lot of the U.S. military leadership thought that Ukraine wouldn't last but a couple days, let alone a couple weeks. So to hear now, and myself included for what it's worth, I didn't think Ukraine would be fighting as long as they have. They've surprised the whole world. But for now, in the middle of November, to hear U.S. leadership saying they have uh, close to zero chance of taking all of Ukraine says how much this war shifted. Continuing, General Milley said, so in terms of probability, the probability of a Ukrainian military victory defined as kicking the Russians out of all of Ukraine to include what they define or what the claim is on Crimea, the probability of that happening anytime soon is not high, militarily. Politically, there may be a political solution where the Russians withdraw. That's possible. You want to negotiate from a position of strength. Russia right now is on its back. So General Milley's kind of got, kind of got pushed in this, uh, in this event about his suggesting that Ukraine, earlier in the week, or maybe, maybe it was last week, he said Ukraine has achieved as much as they can hope to militarily. It's time for talks, something along those lines. Uh, and he got a lot of pushback for that. So what he's getting at now is... You know, the idea that Russia has no probability of taking all of Ukraine, and he views the probability of Ukraine taking back all of their territory as very low outside of a political solution. I don't think that's crazy. I mean, it's somewhere in between the two extremes, right? Seems like a pretty reasonable place to land. But uh, continuing with Milley, we'll go back to some comments by, from, uh, from Secretary Austin here. Milley said, the Russian military is suffering tremendously. Leaders have been... Their leadership is really hurting bad. They've lost a lot of casualties, killed and wounded. They've lost, I won't go over exact numbers because they're classified, but they've lost a tremendous amount of their tanks and their infantry fighting vehicles. They've lost a lot of their fourth and fifth generation fighters and helicopters and so on and so forth. Haven't heard a lot about that. Um, the loss of fourth and fifth generation aircraft. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's a follow-up on that one. Moving over to Secretary Austin as they kind of wrap up the event here. The big question that I think, one of the big questions I think was asked was, how long do you think Russia can continue this war with its current arsenal and current personnel? Secretary Austin said they have some problems. They've had some problems since the very beginning of this trying to sustain their efforts. Those problems have only become more acute. They've lost a lot of people, and as important, they've lost a lot of important military gear. So the number of tanks that they've lost, the number of armored personnel carriers, pretty staggering numbers. Adding that we've seen them struggle with having enough munitions to fight the way they want to fight. I think that's important. It's not that Russia is running out of ammunition. He'll get to that in a second. Well, let me just finish this. Um, having enough munitions to fight they want to the way they want to fight. So they're reaching out to Iran. They're reaching out to North Korea. I do think those countries will probably provide them some capability. And so for that reason, I don't think this will be over anytime soon. Our goal is to make sure that we continue to provide Ukraine with the means to do what's necessary to prosecute their campaigns. And he wrapped up there with saying, as we get into the winter, the winter fight 
favors the Ukrainians. So I think that was an interesting point for him to end on. We've heard since March that Russia is running out of everything. And there is a finite supply. And it takes so long to get new tanks onto the battlefield or refurbish tanks out to the battlefield. It takes time to build and develop, um, manufacture new weapons to our uh, new missiles, get those out to the battlefield. There's there is a substantial effort to replenish all of those stocks, an issue that NATO is having as well. Another uh, video I'll get into here shortly. But I think it's a valid point that reaching out to these countries like Iran and North Korea, it's, it's kind of expected, and doing so allows Russia to continue the fight, not necessarily in the way they want to. So in a perfect world, Russia would have more of everything and would not have lost uh, as many vehicles and would not have fired as many missiles as they had to so far in this conflict. But I think that's that's pretty common sense. If Russia had it their way, the war would have been over long ago. But anyways, that'll do it for now. I'll put a link to the uh, article, the transcript of this full readout in the description below if you want to check it out. We'll see you all next time.